but it's more like tripling or quadrupling down at this point. <laughs> Why do that now? You know, a year ago, we had a $500 million software business and $500 million in cash that was generating 0% yield. Today, we have a $500 million software business growing 10% a year and a $5 billion Bitcoin business that's been growing north of 100% a year. So our strategy is to acquire and hold Bitcoin. We've told the market we're going to do it with equity offerings, with convertible debt, with uh, senior debt and junk bonds, and also with cash flows where appropriate. Uh, we saw this as a great opportunity. Uh, we sold uh, over the past uh, quarter about $400 million worth of equity at a price that uh, allowed us to buy Bitcoin in a way that we thought would be accretive to all of our shareholders. So we try to choose our spots. But then in the day, you know, if you add another 10,000 Bitcoin, when the price goes to 100,000, right, it's a lot of money. When it goes to a million, it's a lot of, lot of money. And uh, our shareholders are long Bitcoin. There's no one buying MicroStrategy stock that doesn't believe Bitcoin's going up. So if you've already risked your money to buy MicroStrategy stock and Bitcoin goes up, you'd rather us own more Bitcoin rather than less Bitcoin so you benefit from the upside. And yet there's obviously a looming regulatory crackdown. Take a listen to this from SEC Chair Gary Gensler. Is it your view that stable coins themselves can be securities? Um, I think it's, uh, Senator, they may well be securities. To me, a stable coin doesn't meet the second prong of the Howey test, that there has to be an expectation of profits from the investment. And so if it doesn't meet the Howey test, it looks to me like it's not a security. Now, maybe you've got a good argument for why some are and some aren't. My whole point is, I think we need to have clarity on this. Michael, are you at all concerned that regulators could regulate the exuberance that you were talking about earlier out of the market? I think that um, the big winner of that entire hearing was Bitcoin. <laughs> the, the consensus that's emerging is that Bitcoin is a commodity and Bitcoin is property. And if your use case is to buy Bitcoin as a long-term store of value, then there's broad-based consensus and support for that across Congress, the Senate, the regulators, the administration, and industry here and abroad. Um, I think that there is a, a need for clarity. I mean, there, there's consensus that people think um, the innovations of, of cryptocurrency could be beneficial for the next hundred years. They're good for the industry. They're good for the Western world. Uh, there's also a consensus that we would benefit from clarity. And I think Senator Toomey was pointing out that, that uh, we would all benefit from clarity. Uh, but I think that the SECs uh, would probably agree with them. And I think that over time, we can expect that we'll see more clarity with regard to all digital assets and i expect that will reduce the volatility in the bitcoin space it'll increase public confidence in bitcoin and it's also going to accelerate institutional adoption and retail adoption of bitcoin because these are all good things for the industry what about coinbase versus the sec when you see you know the biggest crypto platform out there taking on the sec you know does that raise concern if, if you're just considering getting into this market right now? Well, I mean, Coinbase is, is uh, the largest um, publicly listed uh, crypto exchange in the United States. And, and uh, the other crypto exchanges are offshore. So I would say Coinbase is probably frustrated. They'd like to see more clarity coming out of uh, government and regulators so they can figure out what they can do and they can't do and they'd like to see it faster. And I think that's really consistent with the entire industry view, which is the industry will benefit from more clarity. I, I think, um, I think the, the fact that Coinbase came public this year in the United States was a good thing. Coinbase doesn't, uh, it doesn't offer the same range of products and services that uh, you can get from offshore crypto exchanges. And, uh, and I think that they would like to compete in a crypto industry, but there are still murky regulations as to what's allowable, what's not allowable. And, and if all the rules are clarified for everyone and everybody competes by the same rules, I think that'll alleviate some of that frustration.
Meantime, Solana, a 17-hour outage this week after having been on a tear. You've got OpenSeas acknowledging that an employee was trading NFTs on inside information. Do these events suggest that this market, that this technology, isn't ready for prime time yet? Well, in the market, there are three things. There's the blue chip asset, the institutional grade asset, which is Bitcoin. And if you want to buy something and hold it for 30 years in lieu of a bond or in lieu of cash or other forms of credit, then Bitcoin is that commodity store of value. It's in a class all by itself. Then you have uh, unicorns. You have the Solanas and the Binance Smart Chains and the Ethereums, and they're like the Airbnbs and the and the Ubers of this space and there and there are sparks and there's a lot of money and there's a lot of risk. And if you're soft bank, maybe you would get into those kind of businesses. And we don't know how those stories end. And then you've got the smaller crypto ventures, right? Or the 6,000 projects out there that are that are uh, looking for some future. And I think they're all competing in a world where there's some murkiness about uh, about what's appropriate, what's not. MicroStrategy obviously only invests in Bitcoin. I think if you're an institutional investor, the only institutional grade asset, the only investable asset you can invest in is Bitcoin, just for the reasons you pointed out. And I think that uh, that the SEC is justified in having an interest in the space for all the reasons you point out. And uh, to the extent that they clarify the rules of the road, I think it's going to make it a, a safer, more welcoming environment for retail investors and also for institutional investors. And, and uh, the industry will evolve and mature in that way. Meantime, you have demonstrators in El Salvador burning a Bitcoin ATM, protesting uh, the country's adoption, the country's president uh, pushing uh, the adoption of Bitcoin. What's your take on what this kind of resistance mean in just in just one country and for the rest of the world? Well, I think, first of all, uh, the big news here is 500,000 people in El Salvador downloaded uh, a lightning Bitcoin wallet and they received $30 worth of Bitcoin. And that's an extraordinary world shaking event. Never happened in the history of the world. And it indicates just how rapidly Bitcoin and lightning can spread. I think that uh, there are sparks in El Salvador and there's politics, right? There's an opposition party in the country. <laughs> there's opposition parties in every single state of the union and in every country in the world. And, and so if the government takes one position, there's going to be an opposition to that position. And it's natural to see that. But I, I think that the way to think about Bitcoin is Bitcoin is the most disruptive technology of the decade.